door. That's 4913 door. Investigate the unknown trouble. Code 2. 56 to 1 in service. Starting mileage 10,638. 10,638. Mileage 10,638. Detective Unit 56 in service on the night watch. This is Don Reed, police recorder. You're riding in a detective unit. Black sedan, radio buried in the glove compartment. No identification as a police car. Driving, Sergeant Ron Perkins. Partner, Sergeant Kurt Walter. All of us dressed in civilian clothes, sports suits, overcoats. This is Detective Unit 56. Wonderful. So while you're with it. Did you read 47's call on unknown trouble? 56, uh, Roger. 56, follow up on this investigation. 56, Roger. 4913, Dover, right? 56, 104. We'll um, follow up the radio car on unknown trouble. But as I was saying, while you're with us tonight, remember the people you meet are not actors. You're listening just as it happens. Because this is it. This is real. This is Night Watch. Night Watch, the actual on the scene report of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound is authentic. Wherever Detective Unit 56 is called, you follow as the official police recorder transcribes the investigations. Night Watch is presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. We transfer you now to Detective Unit 56, operating somewhere in the field on an unknown trouble call, and to police recorder Don Reed. Unknown trouble call. Well, you want to take the rear? Um, keep our eyes open. Can be anything. Can be nothing. Most of the house is dark. Few lights. Two uniformed officers taking off from the rear. Check the building out. Flashlights disappearing in the dark. There's a man stepping out of the shadows. Sergeant Perkins going over. I'm the man that put in the call. I heard a scream and it sounded like a body falling. What about? Uh, in that little house uh, there in the rear. Okay, you wait here. We'll check it out. Apparently, disturbance originated in a small house in the rear of the lot. There's a thick growth of trees in front, making our way along the path. Flashlights darting about. Well, nothing yet. Here it is, tiny house. One, two, two rooms. Light on. Uniformed officers coming up. Bill Hebbard and his partner. Bill, see if you can hear anything. There's some kind of beef in there. Let's go. Up on the porch. Elderly man in screen. Blood on white shirt. Uh, you having trouble, man? Yes. What, what's in the trouble? Well, he, he five, third, he Elderly woman, about 80. Long flannel nightgown. Yes. I, I, I hear you. Yes. If you want to take me to jail, I'm ready to go. Or anywhere else. He, he does that all the time. Well, this is going to stop. We can't have any... Uh... You don't know the abuse that I do take. I go along up there, I see his cars, and I call him old dirt on him. Yeah, he says, he says, work call, then. And if I say anything, oh, he just calls me every night and glad he's to you. I don't say a word under she just told me about nothing. I have to lie. What happened to the blood there? What you I hate it. Hmm? I never heard it. Turn your head around. Oh. Oh, it's this skin. All right, now tell you what. You need to go to bed. You need to go to bed. Don't want any more noise. We don't want any more calls. What? The neighbors have complained. If we have any more calls down here, we'll have to take somebody to jail. Well, and you go on. You tell him to come home like a gentleman and I'm treat me right. I'm telling you both right. right now, I'm not going to enter into your... Treat me right. I'm not going to enter into your private affairs, your domestic troubles at all. But we're interested in keeping the peace and quiet well, down here. That. That's what I want. These officers, so get another call that? That? These officers get another call down here. 
We just take you all into jail. That's all right. I yeah, can't be up there too. and fight well, she's going to go to bed, and you're in two different rooms. You can't argue. Well, when they come home, you yeah, have them lights for me. Listen, 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 listen. Just listen to me a minute. We want to keep it quiet here. There's people in the neighborhood that go to sleep. That's right. I do, too. Now, if we get another call out here, too. we're going to take you both down to county jail. I don't care. Because well, I don't care what you do. Right you, you want to be booked? <laughs> you want to go to jail? No, I want to go to jail. You want to all your and go to bed and go to sleep? Well, your friends and know about it? Right, where are you going to sleep? Where are you going to sleep? Mm-hmm. Oh, you go in there and shut the door and go to bed, huh? Yeah, that's what's the matter. How long have you been married, sir? How long have you been married, sir? Fifty years. But fifty years you've been married? I think that would be you I think it would probably be a little different. Mm-hmm. You go in there and go to sleep. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay, look. Right now. Then we'll leave. Okay. Good night. You better stay. I'll stop back in here and call me more than my husband. Husband, heading for bedroom. That should quiet things down. Temporarily. Okay. Good night. Good night. Hey, you know what's something, fellas? They've been married 50 years. 50 years? 50 years. Let's <laughs> see what you're getting into. I don't think Jay will watch for being drunk. He never had me. And I don't do nothing but see him. Good night. Shut the door. Go to bed. Good night. You're just going one way in the air and the other we might have some long time. Did you get the impression that that man made you hit back? <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know whether I'm married or not, no. <laughs> well, I'll give you a rough idea what it's like after 50 years. After 50 years, I think they deserve to have a fight. Oh, yeah. Control one to all units. Be on the lookout for a light blue sedan. Make unknown. Contains one occupant. Partial license number 4 Baker 290. This car wanted by LAPD for armed robbery. KMA 394. I got that number down, sir. Five six to one. Uh, clear on the two fourteen call. Advise. Five six ten four. Five six ten nineteen. The juvenile officers would like to see you in the station. Uh, five six Roger. Be in in about ten minutes. Yeah, sure, Jim. Come on in. Yeah, we'll be glad to. What's up? Oh, Ross picked up a couple of 14-year-old boys carrying some liquor. Wants us to talk to him. Hmm. Evidently, this was the reason we were asked to return to the station. In plain clothes. Two jars under his arms. Jim Ross, juvenile officer. While en route to the station, we saw two others walking down the street with carrying what could be possible saps. Uh, we stopped and asked them a few questions and, and see that they were carrying two jars of preserves. So to make sure that they were telling us the truth, we opened the jars and, and it apparently is uh, alcohol or some type of whiskey. So we decided to bring them on in and find out where they got it and what they were going to do with it. Have you smelled this? Yes, we checked it. <coughs> hundred proof. More than hundred proof. Um, you want to talk to the... Uh, First boy in office, butch haircut, high field boots, Air Force jacket, eyes glancing from officer to liquor to officer, sickly smile. What are those bottles? There's all sorts of stuff in them. What? Egg and egg, early times, uh, sweet vermouth. Let's see, some uh, gin and some flavoring. Some stuff that's in a light blue bottle that's for putting in uh, um, Manhattan's or something like that. <clears throat> what are you going to do with it? We're going to get a little high, you know, and have a good time. Just to do it? Mm hmm. How often does this go on? Well, um, well, every month, I guess, something like that. Not too much. We don't carry it to success, you know. How old are you? Fourteen. How old are you, buddy? Fourteen or fifteen, huh? Where did you get the whiskey? In his house. Did you have a bottle of his fight? Mm-hmm. His folks know about it? His mother left uh, before before we got in the bottle. No, no she doesn't. What are your folks going to say? Well, I don't know. My tomorrow man, you know, we get around quite a bit together, you know. 
You got no business with that in your possession. You got no business drinking it. If your folks don't see that you refrain from drinking it, I will. In trouble before? Yes, sir. Before? Just in the car. What else? And that's all. It's not going to kill you. <clears throat> Have you tasted that? Mm hmm. You like it? It's all right, except for the sweet from mother. You don't like that? No, I like it when, when it's not involved with whiskey. But it doesn't taste to get the taste, it tastes out of whiskey. When you're 14? Mm-hmm. How do you know when to stop drinking it? Well, when we start laughing around, you know, that's about as far as we go. You get pretty drunk, or...? No, no, not to excess, where you wake up with a hangover. I think if you drank that, you'd have quite a hangover. So much for the first one. Okay. Into the office, second boy. Good of Concoction mixed in his house. <clears throat> Hair over eyes, adolescent complexion. How old are you? Fourteen. Oh, you don't know that Drink it. Wine. Kid drunk. Wine. For the fun of it. Your folks know about it? No, sir. Where did you get the stuff? In my house. You ever been in trouble? Yes, sir. My for? For hit and run in the car and robbery. Robbery? Mm-hmm. What kind of robbery? Taking money out of lockers at the beach club. And you're how old? Fourteen. <coughs> Folks aren't home, huh? My mom isn't here. Your dad home? I don't have one. Thank you. Put this stuff in your pocket and wait outside. Right? Well, I tell you, good soul for trouble. Just as, just as, as blase as you pick them up for chewing gum. Fourteen years old. That amount there can make about five of them drunk. That amount can make me drunk for a week. Did you smell that stuff? Wine, gin, whiskey, and vermouth. I don't understand it. First, you just, um... So we caught him. So what? Not much else we can do but walk up and call our parents. Good enough. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real, and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. And now it's back to Night Watch, as we return you to headquarters where an investigation is underway, and your official police recorder, Don Reed. Juvenile officers spend an hour on the phone attempting to locate parents of boys. First boy will have to stay with us overnight. Parents out of town. Located mother of second boy. On her way in the office now. Son behind her. Sheepish grin. Uh, did your boy tell you what happened on this? Well, I think I got it. What do you think happened? Well, they got in my liquor supply and poured a little bit out of each one and, and put it in a, in a bottle and were taking it over to this dance, apparently. Mm -hmm. Like, like <laughs> good egg and egg scotch. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe you're not aware that uh, apparently this happens quite often. And oh, right. Well, <clears throat> actually, uh, the boy didn't commit any crime. He was just possession of an alcoholic. Well, I, I know. I mean, it was a very silly thing to do, I think. 
and uh, we do have a log in fact. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, it might be better if you'd lock up your liquor store. Well, I was going to say, it looks like, I mean, it's a crime, but a shame to have to not be able to trust your own boy, but it looks like I'm going to have to put a padlock on the thing. Uh, we're not going to take any further action on this, uh, except uh, we'll put him on a th six months voluntary probation. Uh, and uh, with the uh, idea that he will not do any drinking or be in possession of alcohol. And if he's picked up again, we'll refer back to this, and we'll take legal action by filing a petition with the juvenile court. Do you think that you'll be in here again for the same thing? No, sir. Well, let's hope he isn't in here for anything again. I mean, that's what I'd like to teach. Well, drinking in juveniles is a major problem in the United States, and especially on the West Coast. And uh, it causes a great deal of trouble. It, it, it just <laughs> what do you do with kids in the team? Shoot them until they're 21 and then dig them back up again or something? But I'm getting so I'm ashamed to walk by a police station anymore. You wonder what what you are supposed to do. You try, and you try to do the right thing, and, and yet it doesn't really make that much difference. <clears throat> well, any time that you feel that... Uh, you can't handle him or he doesn't mind if you'll just give us a call we'll be glad to come down and try to well it isn't bad i mean when i tell him no he can't do something that's all right but geez i mean the minute i let him out again why well, if he starts getting into difficulties why right? we don't want to see you in trouble we're not trying to prosecute you but uh, you're through as far as you're drinking you're 14 years old you're through well, that's it Okay. Thank you for coming in. Okay, thank you. Miss Johnny? Yeah, you can release the second boy. Mother's on her way out. Right. Did he go down? Yeah. You think his mother had a headache? I wonder what would have happened to him if he'd have drank that stuff. Check this car out. It doesn't look like it belongs here. I want to come in. Five one uh, in lady. Uh, regarding uh, four five nine. Throw your light over here, Kurt. See if you can read that registration. I'll check out the back. Hey, that's a blue sedan, too. Yeah, let's get him. Okay. Taking off in pursuit. Dark sedan. Disappearing around the bend just to see the taillights. Car, similar description used in hold-up tonight in downtown Los Angeles. Got in our siren. Walter using the hand spotlight with a red lens. Traffic pulling over to the right. Gaining on the suspect's car. He's in the middle lane and really rolling. Both range to about 300 yards. Red light pouring in through his rear window. Suspect cut his light, flipping off in the side street. Running in the dark now. Making a sharp turn into a driveway. We're uh, bouncing in behind. Guns out. Just one occupant. Perkins getting him out. Walter covering from the right. Suspect out. Hands up. All right, I got that. I got that. Your hands out of your pocket. Shaking down the suspect. Walter searching. Perkins holding a gun on him. Checking the license number of the car. It isn't the one wanted by L.A. for 211. Hold up. Elderly woman, out of back door. Bathrobe, curlers. Okay, put your hands down. Get your driver's license. Suspect in glare of headlights. About 19. Appears sober. No sign of alcohol. Confused. Eyes glazed. Not sure we're getting through to him. Chasing him, hitting him. He's my son. 
We're not interested whether he's your son or not right now. We're interested in he tried to get away from a police car. Oh. Uh, what did you turn your lights off for? I turned and I came home. Did you hear our siren? I heard your siren when they hit me in the mouth. I said I didn't have no jerk chicken. You know what you're required to pull over and stop as soon as you hear a siren? I pulled over and said to the right. They hit me in the mouth and they you, said You uh, turned your lights off about a block and a half back. Why did you do that? I pulled over to the right. You turned your lights off stopped. as you come up the street. As you understand, some guy was going to... I understand, but why did you turn out your lights? Somebody was going to hit me with a bomb, hit me in the mouth. He was trying to kill me. But I you had... knew this was a police unit, didn't you? Sergeant Perkins talking with the mother. Let's move over there. You know, friend, man, he never do no wrong to nobody. He never do no wrong, but he's thinking his head. No, but when he, 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 when, he tries to, when he tries to outrun that he siren on the red light. Oh, there's a red light on the car. There's a siren on it. He kept on going, he'd have been shot at. Yeah. He'll have no gun. If he hadn't come in here, if he hadn't come in here, if he'd gone straight up and turned on Venice, we'd have fired on him. Well, he's not a thief. He's not a thief. As far as he was he was hot. Well, he's not a thief. He's yeah, not a thief. We take him for a mile trying to stop him. What do we have to do to stop the man? I don't know what else we can do to identify ourselves but turn a red light on and, and put a siren. We'll shoot the tires next. To shoot the tires. You'll have to kill a man for nothing. Have you ever tried to hit a target at 60 miles an hour? You don't know whether you hit the tire, whether you hit the person or the car. Well, here's mother's advice. Shoot the tires next time he tries to run away. Back to the suspect. Confused expression still there. You were, you were going the wrong direction for the police department. I was going to the police department. You were coming away from the police department. You heard the siren, didn't you? I, he threw a bottle at me. I had to get away from there. He said, swing a bottle at me. He kept kicking at me. Mother says you got you mentally unbalanced. You got that is that what it is? How much did you drink? How much did you drink? He's too big, guys. Let me take a look at you. There's two over there. There's two over there. Clean across the head. I don't see no marks on there. No, there's a big scar all the way across. It bust me over the head with an iron. There's no lump on there, sir. There is there. No, there ain't. There is there. Just stay right there. Suspect cleans head wound. Invisible. <coughs> Perkins, Walter, off to one side. He is he's mentally off a little bit. A result of the war. And he has his, his asthma. And um, I think probably in the best interest is just... Release them to them. Well, I think that would be the that best deal uh, under those circumstances. Kids here at the house, and the uh, mother and the sister both promised they'd take care of him, see that he wouldn't drive a car again. Well, he's darn lucky we didn't shoot him. I know. I was thinking he'd get worried after that. That's his father right there too, saying release them to him. Okay. Okay. We'll make sure they understand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll give you here. Give this uh, back then. Right. <clears throat> Move back onto the father and son now. Here's your driver's license, sir. Yes, Put it back in your pocket. We're going to give you a break on this thing because of the trouble you had down there at the bar. And we want to be sure that you understand. Yes. Don't you ever do that again. When you turn your lights off, when a police car is chasing you, you're just asking for trouble. Uh, sir, uh, could you do me a favor to go back and see? All right, we'll drive by there, and if we can find any, any trouble there, we'll take care of it. Yes, sir. But in the future, don't you try to run from a police car. All right. And be sure you don't cause any more trouble. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, all right. Five one requesting seven to Lars. Five one, okay, seven. I think we'd better back out a little slower than when we came in here. All clear over here. A lot of guys come out of the war like that. Yeah, me too. What you have just heard is real. Recorded as it actually happened on The Night Watch. We switch you now to headquarters in the office of the Chief of Police, W.N. Hildebrand. Tonight's first investigation amounted to separating an elderly couple having a quarrel. However, I want to point out that when answering an unknown trouble call, the officers must be extremely alert and on the lookout for anything. 
The second case of the boys carrying liquor resulted in both subjects being given six months probation by our juvenile bureau. This case will be filed away with hundreds of other routine investigations, but it is important in the fight against juvenile crime to stop a situation before it gets out of hand. And now the final investigation where Detective Unit 5-6 was in pursuit of a suspect's car which failed to stop on warning of red light and siren. As you heard, the subject was released to his parents. I realize there are people who might question this decision, but we should remember police work must be mixed with human tolerance. This boy faced a difficult mental problem sustained in the service of his country. Society would have gained little by his arrest. The important thing was, he was ordered not to drive, and he was to receive immediate treatments. His parents assumed this responsibility. Incidentally, the officers checked the cafe where the subject claimed he was slugged. They found the whole incident to be a product of his imagination. Tonight, you have followed Detective Unit 5-6 through a few of the problems encountered by your law enforcement officers. To give you a better understanding and insight is the reason for Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty on the Night Watch. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch is brought to you with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by the official police recorder, Don Reed. Night Watch is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hadlock.